This is John Hernandez. Hanging out with me today is the very just awesome, kick-ass, over-the-top singer from Metal Church, from Presto Ballet. He has done so many amazing things in his career. Ronnie Monroe. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule. I just want to just dive right in this, do a little bit of background first on you, and then we'll just kind of work all the way to the front. Sure. Okay. When did you first start playing music? Uh, from a very, very early age, um, you know, singing along to the AM radio, you know, while taking trips with my mom in the car and, and whatnot and banging on pots and pans, you know, <laughs> at the age of one, uh, like a lot of kids. And, uh, but my first instrument was saxophone when I was in elementary that lasted about all of three months. I need, I needed something more. So then, uh, that's when I switched to drums and my mom actually was very supportive. She bought me my first kit. Sometimes actually even let me stay home when she knew I was faking being sick just so I could practice to, <laughs> to kiss and, and uh, whoever else, Rainbow and the bands that I was practicing to at that time. So basically, yeah, from a very young age, I've, I've always been interested in music. Always will be. Very cool. Very cool. What was the first band you was in? Uh, the first band I actually was ever in, I think, was called Madhouse, and I was a drummer. And uh, that lasted only for about a year. And then uh, basically, our singer, something happened to him. He didn't show up to rehearsal one day, and the guys asked me if, if I wanted to try to sing from behind the kit. So I attempted Hollowed Be Thy Name and uh, Man on the Silver Mountain, basically. And uh, although it didn't turn out that well, the guitar player on the ride home asked me if I would want to become a lead singer, and we'd start a new band. And basically, the next day, I took my drums down to the local music shop, traded them in for a power amp, a mic, a stand, and a chord. And that's kind of how it all started. Wow, that's just so impressive. Um, who was your influences in music and why? I've had a lot of influence. I've always cited Ronnie James Dio, Bruce yes. Dickinson, Rob Halford, you know, in the metal genre, as well as Ian Gillen. Uh, man, Child in Time, come on, the screams in that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that kind of stuff. But also, um, you know, I've got a pretty wide range. I like a lot of Motown, um, just basic rock and roll, even some, uh, you know, some R&B stuff. Uh, you know, it just I've got a pretty wide range. I, I don't discriminate in music. That's awesome. Well, in your vocal, your voice, I mean, you've got such range and depth and, and you know, just deepness and soulness and i think it really comes through in your singing from one song just one style to the next song to the next style very cool thank you very much what was your first big break in music my first big break um i would actually have to say that was getting to play vakken in 2002 with a seattle band called rottweiler uh, they had a label over there, Hellion Records, that actually released one of their CDs from back in the 80s and uh, wanted to bring them over as kind of a nostalgia act. And the singer of the band freaked out for some reason, couldn't do it or whatever, and they called me and asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said, sure. So basically, that was my first big break, and it was shortly after that when we got back, when we were about to record the first Rottweiler CD with me on vocals that I was approached by Kurt Vanderhoof. Nice, nice. The first time I ever heard you sing was in Metal Church. Just completely blew me away. Um, when and how did you become the frontman for that amazing band? Well, like I said, I was um, I had a mutual friend of Kurt and I, um, Kat, who introduced Kurt and, and myself. I went out to see his solo band one night. So anyway, we got together, I went up to his place, and uh, initially we were in talks for me to become the singer for Vanderhoof, his solo project. And while I was there, of course, me being a fan of Metal Church, <laughs> I said, well, hey, what's the deal with Metal Church? Why can't we do that? And at first, you know, because of the Masterpiece Tour and, and them getting back with Dave, and it just, Kurt uh, basically deemed that tour disaster piece. It just... Oh. It just didn't work out, unfortunately. Fortunately for me, but but not for, <laughs> but not for them. And he was just kind of like, he just really didn't want to do it. So 
I kept on my horse and like would bring him up uh, CDs, demos, things of that nature with me singing and screaming on it, basically to kind of show him that I can sing that way. It was a few weeks later, a couple weeks later, actually, when he finally called me up and said, okay, do you, you really want to do metal church? And I'm like, how oh, yes, I want to do metal church. <laughs> yes. And he goes, okay, I talked to the guys, uh, we're, we're going to do it. And that's how it started. Nice. How many albums have you done with metal church? I did three as of, as of right now. We're working on the new one as of right now as well. So Very it will cool. be four soon. Very, so there is a new Metal Church album coming. Uh, yeah, I don't know when, but uh, Kurt is writing right now. He sent me a few ideas so far, and it's sounding great. It's sounding like old Metal Church. Nice. You, well, you just made this Metalhead's week. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine too. I'm very excited to do another record. Well, I like and, another chance. So. Nice. Well, Metal Church is busy again. You guys have some show dates and stuff coming up. Tell me about that. Well, as I said earlier, I mean, we are doing Brazil in, in uh, April and then Germany in July. And basically, um, we'll see what else happens around that. But uh, right now, we're focused on um, writing and getting a, a great record put nice. out is, is really what our main focus is. That's oh. I'm so excited, but also you have such a wide vocal range and you are so gifted. You've also done a lot of work with it, a very amazing 70s sounding, you know, progressive band called Presto Ballet. Tell me about that project. Well, first and foremost, Presto Ballet is Kurt Vanderhoof's uh, baby. It's a uh, very 70s styled progressive rock, which he loves. And I also love that stuff too. And, uh, Basically, how that transpired was Kurt and I were talking, and the singer from before, uh, Scott, I believe, um, basically really couldn't do the band anymore, and Kurt called and asked if I would do the next record, and I said, of course, uh, you know, I love Kurt, I respect him highly, uh, you know, his writing is, it speaks for itself. So I said, sure, yeah, I'd love to, and I ended up doing a full length and an EP. Very cool. What was it like for you to sing that style of music after doing projects like Metal Church? Well, John, you know, I just, like I said earlier on my influences and whatnot, I've always just, I've sang a lot of stuff. I just don't only sing metal. Metal is running, you know, always has run through my veins, you know, always will. But I just, I do like to kind of spread my wings and do different things. So it gave me a chance to be a bit more sing-songy, if you will. Because with Metal Church, it's it's metal, and it's meant to be a bit more gritty and this and that. So I was actually able to show a bit more of the softer side with Presto Ballet. And again, just a, a bit more singing and a bit more melody as well. Very cool, very cool. You've also made a couple solo albums. I would love to talk about them, um, but first, The Fire Within. How long did it take to record it? You know, the productions, the musicians, all the good stuff on that album. Well, with that one, that, of course, that was my first record, and it was after Metal Church broke up, and it was you know me trying to just stay out there and kind of get my ideas out of my head. And I did work with Kurt Vanderhoof. He engineered and co-produced it with me. And basically, from start to finish, I would say about eight months to, cool. to complete the record. Very cool. That is just awesome. Um, who played on the album as far as musicians? Uh, well, we've got, you know, Kurt did some rhythms. We got Rick Van Zant that played on there, Chris Caffrey from Sabotage, TSO, Michael Wilton, of course, from uh, Queensryche. Um, and who else played on there? I think that was about it for The Fire Within. Awesome. Very cool. I would love to take a quick break. Let's spin a song or two off The Fire Within because that album is absolutely phenomenal. Then we'll come back and talk about uh, your Lords of the Edge album great i'll be here this is reacts radio i am john hernandez we'll be back in a few and then he'll say you know you know the editing mixing you know we'll make it all in there i'll play a couple songs off the album for the one it airs that one time and yeah. and then um yeah cool okay and i'm like so i'm ready to if you need a drink or something now's a great time but if not i'm ready to keep rolling no i'm all good man okay this is Reacts Radio. I am John Hernandez. Hanging out today with me is the amazing singer, Ronnie Monroe. Thanks, brother, for taking time out of your schedule. No worries. Glad to be here, John. Awesome. In 2011, you put out a killer album called Lords of the Edge. Tell me about that album, the recording time, the musicians, the production. Okay, well, Lords of the Edge was uh, done via the internet with a guy 
uh, Stu Marshall from Australia, from Empires of Eden. Nice. And also Stu, I believe, now is working with some of the ex-members of Man of War in a new project, so you should look out for Stu. But, uh, you know, Stu did the engineering, co-produced it with me, played a lot of the instruments, wrote most of the songs. The Very talented guy. But, uh, you know, also I had some other people on there, some of the usual suspects. Uh, uh, Michael Wilton played on it. Uh, Chris Caffrey, again, wrote a song for me. Stu was on there. Uh, Rick Van Zant was on there. Um, I hope I'm not missing people. I probably am. But uh, the process basically was a little quicker on that one because uh, Stu and I were like-minded in the writing process and whatnot. So that one was, I would say, probably about six months from start, from thought, the first thought to the finished thought. Very cool. Do you have any particular formulas you use when you're writing songs, or do you just kind of dive into it? You know, I, the process usually goes like this, that I'm sent music, and the music speaks to me. It pretty much dictates how I write. Uh, you know, so that's how I usually do it. But then again, there are some rare occasions when I get my own melody that comes to me and this and that, and then I will go in and lay that track down, put a harmony or two on it or whatnot, and then I'll send it off to who I'm writing with. And who I'm writing with a lot right now for my third solo record is Paul Clef, formerly of Firewolf. Yes. So uh, that's basically how, how him and I have been working. That is cool. So there is a new Ronnie Monroe solo album on its way. Uh, yeah, we're we're doing the writing demos right now, and uh, I'm not sure exactly when I my projected release date will be, but uh, I would hope that it would be sometime by summer. Very cool. That's there again. You just made my whole week. Very cool. Okay, you did a long run in Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I would love to hear about that. Okay, well, you know, I did uh, the 2011 uh, winter tour, and I sang the song Old City Bar, which was played by the schizophrenic bum. And basically, uh, you know, I've never done any acting, and there was really wasn't a lot of acting in that, but uh, there was a little. And, you know, TSO, it was something that I always wanted to do since, you know, the first time I saw the show about eight, nine years ago. And I've got some friends in there as well that play in the band, like Jeff Plate and Chris Caffrey and all that. So it seemed inevitable that I eventually would become a member. But anyway, back to that. Yeah, I did Old City Bar during the winter tour. I loved it. It really afforded me a chance to do something different, as I spoke of earlier. And then, I guess, because of my performance and whatnot on Old City Bar, they asked me to do the spring tour to take over for Jeff Scott Soto, who was going out on the Queen Extravaganza, I believe it was. So I did the spring tour playing Mephistopheles. Nice. Which, which was very heavy metal. And, uh, you know, trans Siberian Orchestra is a great organization, very well ran, very well respected. And uh, it was just, uh, a, it's cool to be part of it. I'll just put it to you that way. I, I don't know what's in store for me in the future with them. I'm part of the family. And uh, we'll just have to see what happens in the future. That is that is just simply awesome. Well, Jeff Plate, you've he's metal church also, so that's was probably really, you know, just kind of cool to be on the same stage with him there. Really cool. Oh yeah, Jeff's a great drummer and a good friend. What projects are you working on right now up beyond just the metal church and um your solo album? Um, well, pretty much uh so those two things, that's taken up a lot of time, especially now that Kurt is, you know, sending me songs and, and whatnot. So I'm doing that, but also I have a uh, project with some friends of mine that's called Black Mass Rising, which is also pretty metal. I'm, I've done a few songs with them. I'm going to do a couple more, and I'm going to appear in a video for a song I wrote called Dead Rising. I'm going to be doing that. Actually, when I fly back from Brazil, I'm going to go into Pittsburgh and, and uh, have a video shoot with them and... I don't know when they're going to release their CD, but that would be in the next few months as well. Very cool. Speaking of videos, have you done any videos on your two solo albums? Uh, yes. On Fire Within, I was fortunate enough to work with Zen Film and did uh, the video for Delirium. So make sure you check that out if you haven't already. And then Lords of the Edge, we did a video for the song The Vision, and that is also out on YouTube. Very cool. I'll make sure that they get posted up and everything too when this airs. Cool. Thank you. Where can we find you online? Um, 
basically everywhere, but RonnieMonroe.com, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, MySpace. MySpace is not dead, by the way. It's going to make a comeback. <laughs> but virtually everywhere on the Internet. Very cool. Very cool. Ronnie, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and everything. Any final words to the listeners out there? I just, well, John, first off, uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate the exposure. And to everyone out there, just, you know, keep the metal alive, support your local metal scene, and definitely make sure that you check out my sites and the Metal Church sites, and uh, we'll keep you abreast on what's going on so you can come out and see the band. You rock, brother. Thank you so very much. And thank you, John. Take care.